Hello, brothers and sisters. Welcome to Nets of Hope. This is Cindy. Any of you that haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, I highly suggest that you do. Many great things are coming, my brothers, my sisters, my church, my family, my friends. I want to speak to you, the church, first. God is about to judge his church. You may not believe that, but I'm gonna read you scripture over in the book of Peter. A 9-11 is coming, and it's coming before August the 1st. And God says in his word that he's going to judge his church first. And um, many of you at my church know that I left. I left because God showed me to leave. God showed me that many of you were judging me. And that's a dangerous thing before a holy God. And I don't know how many of you repented. And if any of you repented at all after I left, I don't know. But I come before you to talk to you because this is a serious thing and this is from God that he has laid on my heart. He's been giving me dreams and visions, whether you want to believe it or not. I've heard from the Holy Spirit and I've heard from God the Father and I've heard from the Lord Jesus Christ speak to me. You probably won't believe it because you're not hot and on fire in your prayers and you're not experiencing it yourself he's very real and he does speak to his children the bible is full of all kind of evidence that he spoke to his prophets i'm not saying i'm a prophet i'm his shepherd girl I have told him in prayer over and over and over for quite some time now that there's not a Jonah and that I'll be his Jonah and that I will not run from him and that I will speak to America, I will speak to my family, I will speak to my friends, my neighbors, co-workers and I'll try and get them to understand there's a 9-11 coming. And you can't stop it because God is going to allow it as a great shakening throughout America. He wants every knee to drop to the ground and confess and repent of your sins because we all have them. I have them too, brothers and sisters, family, friends. But it's up to each one separately to get before your God and repent it's not up for you to know my business and it's not up for me to know your business except for when god appoints it to me to point out your sin but otherwise that's the job of the holy spirit the holy ghost now i'm going to read to you first peter chapter 4 verse 17 for it is time for judgment to begin with the household of God. And if it begins with us first, what will be the outcome for those who do not obey the gospel of God? Verse 18. And if it is with difficulty that the righteous is saved, what will become of the godless man and the sinner? Verse 19. Therefore, those also who suffer according to the will of God shall entrust their souls to a faithful creator in doing what is right. Now then, as I speak to you, church, I want you to know each and every one of you that have offended me, that have sinned against me, including pastors, you heard me. You're guilty. 
You're not free of guilt. You are guilty. Those of you that are high up officials in the church, many of you are guilty of sinning against me. God gave me a dream and showed me to leave you as a church, the building. But the true church God showed me is in my heart and it's a secret place where he dwells. He gave me a dream inside the church that I went to. He showed me the sanctuary was darkened and that the light couldn't come on in there anymore. And all of you were missing. None of you were in the building, not one. I don't know what happened to you. It wasn't a rapture, trust me. But what he did show me was to go into the fellowship hall. And when I went in the fellowship hall in this dream, there were lots and lots of people in there that would listen to me. I didn't know any of them, never saw them before in my life. I was stunned in the dream and wanted to know where is my church? God wouldn't show me where my church was. I looked all over for them in all the places that had been remodeled couldn't find them. I opened doors. I looked everywhere. I couldn't find them. And then all of a sudden I sat down and I realized they were not there. And I began to grieve because that's what he wanted me to do. He wanted me to grieve so deeply. And I went into the Sunday school room that used to be mine and there was a white sheet there and I ripped my clothes off. I've never done that before in my life and I had such power to rip them off. That was the Lord's way of helping me to grieve about that church, to let that church go. It's a sad thing when your own pastor doesn't call and wonder where you're at and try and get you to come back, but it's because he sinned against me too. So he was guilty. He couldn't do that. But all you high up officials didn't call me either. And the ones that I did talk to, you wouldn't listen. You wouldn't listen. So inside this dream, I ripped my clothes off, cover myself in a sheet, and I wrapped it around me and I go sit down. As I'm sitting down grieving in the dream deeply, I heard someone preaching and I thought, well, they are here. And I got up and I started trying to figure out where, where the preaching was coming from. I had to walk over to the wall in the dream. And when I walked over to the wall in the dream, I, it kept getting louder and louder and I put my ear against the wall. And all of a sudden, the preaching that I was hearing was me. It was me preaching love and forgiveness and a living hope. It was me praising God and worshiping God on the other side of that wall. And then I woke up and the people were praising what they were hearing from God, from God's shepherd girl. They were so worshiping him. But when I woke up, he showed me your sanctuary is a secret place. It's hidden. It's hidden in my heart. It's a hidden sanctuary. I'm asking you today, brothers and sisters in Christ, in the church that I used to go to, and many of those of you that are not in that church, but you've been family to me in Christ, and you've been dear friends, and some of you have just slipped off and said, man, she's crazy. She believes in a planetary object that I've showed you pictures of, showed you that it was in the heavenlies, but it, cut, it kept disappearing on and off throughout the years. You couldn't explain that, but I could. It was in its orbit. It wasn't time for it to come. It's the red dragon comet listed in Revelations 12:4. It's bigger than Earth by seven times. 
God has showed me all these things. The Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, the comet, it is the devil's number. That concerned me and I said, what do you mean? He helped me to find a video on YouTube from a son of his named Gil Broussard. He has a YouTube channel, it's called Planet 7X. The Lord God sent a video to um, one of the only subscribers I was subscribed to because I wasn't a YouTuber at that time. That was back in 2014, 2015, when the red blood moons were taking place. I couldn't find what the Holy Spirit was showing me to seek on YouTube. He said, seek on YouTube, and I couldn't find anything about a comment. So finally, within a 30, 40 day period of time of fasting and praying and seeking, he said the same thing again, go on YouTube and seek. This time when I got to the baby blue laptop that I had, it was like the Holy Spirit said, go to Barney Weiner, the Christian man that I had found on YouTube. While in prayer, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, and God the Holy Ghost, saw to it this man uploaded the video I was having a hard time finding. He uploaded part one and two while I was in prayer. When I clicked on his channel, I couldn't believe it. I was in awe. There was a video there by Gil Broussard and a man named Augusto Perez. I was so eager to hear what he had to say and to find the answer about the comet is the devil's number that I listened to it. As I listened to it, the hair stood up on my arms and my body everywhere. When I got to the crucifixion story the man was talking about, about how this planetary object, Planet 7X, the Nibiru planet, the red dragon comet, when it gets before, between the sun and the earth, it produces a three hour eclipse. There's your evidence brothers and sisters, family and friends. It's in the scripture, the crucifixion scripture in the old Bibles, the new Bibles, the devil has stolen the word. The word eclipse is not even in there anymore. God's allowing to steal the word eclipse to fool you as the church. All eclipses belong to God. They're ordained by him to produce judgments We've had three eclipses in America, creating an A. That's God's initial for one of his names, and an I. That's in the Jewish Bibles, it's not in our Bibles. He has a Bible over there, and they call him Ananiah. And so there was an A produced across America in three different eclipses. That's God's signet ring signature with eclipse. Judgment is coming, a 9-11 will come. I want you to know as my church, I love you. I forgive every one of you. I hope that you repent before this judgment comes. I am welcome to phone calls from you. My phone number is at the top of my channel. But any of those of you that want to call to harass me, don't do that. You can send me a text, email, whoever you are, whether you're my church or my family and you want to talk to me. You send me a text message first identifying yourself and I will arrange a time with you because I have to work a full-time job, 32 to 40 hours a week, plus I do this 12 YouTube channels for the Lord. They belong to him. Now then, I forgive you of all your sins against me. The question is, is you're not clean if you have not repented of what you did to me. Many of you shunned me from doing a women's revival. You treated me badly. And I'm a Christian. And all I was wanting to do was do a pep rally to get the church on fire and to get out in the community and invite them in for a potluck. And we could have saved a lot of people. 
but instead you rebelled against me and you thought, surely God's not working in me because of my disease. Well, I want, I want you to know. God sent a spider to bite me on the right arm and the left arm, and he started regenerating my pigment on my skin. How do you not know he did that to see if you judge me? You don't know, but yet you did judge me as if I'm this awful person. You wouldn't look at my heart. You wouldn't look at my singing on the front pew. You wouldn't look at my love for God. You only wanted to look at the flesh. I forgive you, all of you. Before a holy God, he knows I do. I forgive all of you, but I cannot come back there until he tells me to come back there. And I've been shown I will be back there, but many of you will be dead and gone. But I will be coming back there just don't know when and it'll be to do a type of revival and the living fire of God will flow through my hands and he will revive and save thousands of thousands millions of millions because I've laid down my life I've given him my everything now that I forgive you I leave it in your hands to repent to a holy God and if you want to make things right between you and I, that's fine. But if you want to just repent, that's fine too. But I ask that you subscribe to my channel and show me your support and your love. I'll see your name. And I will accept you back. And I will cleanse you within my heart and mind of what happened between us. Now then, my family, Many of you are living in sin, and I'm encouraging you now. Come out of that sin, repent. Those of you that live in Houston, Texas, I'm concerned about that place. I've been shown it will be destroyed, but I don't know when. I, don't, I do know that the three days of darkness will come soon. Just don't know exactly when. But when they come, the tail of the comet is the most giantest, largest bolt of lightning you've ever seen. It will whoop the fire out of Houston, Texas, and it will pulverize it and destroy it. It's a bad place to live. It's a Sodom and Gomorrah because of the sinful communities that live there. And they prey on people that are not like them, and they try and make them like them. You know what I'm talking about. But dear family, dear friends, those of you that are living with a man or a woman and you're not married to them, you're committing sin in the face of the Holy God. You get with your God and you repent and you do the right thing. And if you want them to be your husband or your wife, you get married and stop living in sin. Repent, or I'm very concerned about judgment coming your way. Those of you that are doing all kinds of other sins, secret sins, pornography, masturbation, lusting after Playboy, book, Playboy, Playgirl stars, looking at the pictures and then masturbating, that's called self-lover. And you're really creating adultery with those people that you're looking at. Repent. Anything that the holy angels do not do, we should not do. Anything that heaven does not do, we should not do. And if we do do them, the Lord Jesus Christ died that we might all be forgiven and cleansed by his blood. I'm making these videos because I'm fixing to go viral. The Lord has done showed me how to go viral now. YouTube is blocking 
my videos from getting out there. I should have millions of millions subscribed to my channel, but the Lord showed me they're, they're blocking me. That's why there's only an average of 50 to 60 people is those are people they've allowed to watch my channel. Anybody else that subscribes to my channel has, has to be from outside of YouTube, not inside of YouTube. So I've got to fix my windshields on my car, advertise my channel, and um, begin to minister to everyone everywhere I go and hand them an invitation to my channel as a free gift. It is my prayer that many of you will join me. Dear family, Please repent of your sins before this judgment comes. It will be here before August the 1st of 2024. I also have been shown that there will be mega earthquakes from the New Mandarin fault line. I've been placed in the mega earthquakes twice and both times because the shaking was so great. It's going to be a magnitude of eight and possibly a nine plus. The shaking was so violent that I had immediate vertigo and was wanting to throw up. I'm one of those kind of people that I can't stand merry-go-rounds. I start wanting to vomit. And that's what I was doing in this very short vision both times. I could not stand up and everyone around me could not either. The shaking was so bad. The Lord has allowed me to research everything about the New Mandarin fault line from 1811 and 1812. And there it is in plain sight. Three mega earthquakes on the very first day. Those mega earthquakes hit Arkansas, Missouri, and Kentucky. It affected the Mississippi River. The Mississippi River was tossed out of its banks to the right and to the left over a hundred miles out of its banks, flooded and devastated the area three different times in one day. M many, many thousands of people died. Some were never found. Houses and homes were completely destroyed from the people that lived close by the river. It was like a tsunami coming out of the river banks. They lost all identity, all personal possessions, all clothing, shoes, anything and everything they didn't have on them, they lost. They couldn't get anything out of a bank account, couldn't find a cell phone if they would have had one in 1811 and 1812. So this is what they're going to experience this time. Dear family and friends, I'm warning you. This is a warning to all of you. Repent before your holy God and get right. And I wanna encourage you to bow down to him if you're not handicapped at least twice a day. Continue to seek him and watch him begin to just cleanse you. Ask him to cleanse your heart, your mind, and your flesh, and he will. Ask him to remove all the seeds the devil has sown in your heart and mind and even in your flesh, the desires that he sows into your flesh to want to masturbate, to want to commit adultery, to want to look at porn. He'll cleanse it all if you ask him, if you mean it. But if you don't truly repent of those sins and you just keep going back to it, just keep going back to it like a tornado that just keeps popping up in your life, then you're not praying hard enough. You're not serious enough. Excuse me, I'm a wilderness shepherd girl out in the yard at the front of my house and it's majorly hot. I'm asking you to repent, get right with your God and you don't have very much time to do it. You will get these messages once I press the button of what the Lord showed me to press. And he helped me to get this PA system so that I could be a little louder so you can hear me in your cars and trucks and even while you're working. That it'll kind of sort of help lock out the radio system in your 
workplace or block out the wind coming in your window if you're like me and you don't have any air conditioning, you'll be able to hear my voice more better. He's a good, good God. And those of you that have kind of slipped away from him and you haven't been praying faithfully in years, America, my brothers, my sisters, my family. Remember what nation you live in. It has become a nation of Sodom and Gomorrah. There's so much sin here. And we're fixing to have to endure the judgment that's upon those that are wicked. But if you turn your life around, he will watch over you, care for you, protect you. And he will see to it that famine does not come to your door. Question is, is are you serious enough to want it? I assure you that the grocery stores are going to start being more and more and more without food. Once the earthquakes start, once this war starts, it will shut down all trucking. Everybody will wipe out the grocery stores. And this will all happen before August the 1st. You can believe me or not, but when you wait to see if it's gonna happen, it'll be too late for you, except for repenting and what little food you do have. The Lord God can send forth a multiplying angel and he can multiply the food that you do have because you finally did turn and repent. Those of you that are friends of mine, dear friends, and you've just kind of like walked away and you've said to yourself, she is crazy. She talks about the planetary object. Many of you are family and friends and wouldn't even call to say happy Thanksgiving, Merry Christmas, happy birthday. You just wanted to keep thinking about, yeah, she's crazy. You bet you, I'm crazy in love with the Lord Jesus Christ, the God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, God the Holy Ghost. And they show me things and they speak to me. They're very real. You bet you I'm crazy. Now, I didn't know the timing of the war. He left that a secret, but he put the fear of God in me to preach to you all the years I preached to you. And that's because I love you. That's why I preached to you. That's why I was so strong to you. I didn't do it to hurt you. I didn't do it to separate us. I did it because it's the truth. The Holy Spirit doesn't speak for nothing. It's from God the Father. That's in the book of John 16. Let me read that to you. It's nothing like learning a little bit of scripture. Okay, here it is. John 16, verse 12. This is the Lord Jesus speaking. It's in red ink. I have many more things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. But when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all the truth, for he will not speak on his own initiative, but whatever he hears, he will speak and he will disclose to you what is to come. He will glorify me, for he will take of mine and will disclose it to you. That's exactly what the Holy Spirit's done to me. All things that the Father has are mine. Therefore, I said that he takes of mine and will disclose it to you. He's done that. And so I just ask that you repent, dear family, dear church, dear friends. Subscribe to my channel. Don't be ashamed anymore. But be cleansed with the holy water of God. Now then, he wants me to read to you Ezekiel. Thirty-two, I believe it is. Nope. Oh, Thirty-six. Sorry. Ezekiel 36, verse 25 and 26. Here I will share it with you. He can do a mighty work in your heart. This is what he does for those that he saves. 
and for the sons and daughters of God that truly repent. Then I will sprinkle clean water on you, and you will be clean. I will cleanse you from all your filthiness and from all your idols. He'll cleanse you from not praying on your knees for years and years and years. He'll cleanse you for just throwing in the towel and being lukewarm or cold or warm. He'll cleanse you. He'll forgive you of all of it if you really mean it. Moreover, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you, and I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. He's able to do that. There's one other scripture I want to read to you because my God is a wonderful God. I'm going to read to you Micah 7, verse 18 through 20. Who is a God like you who pardons iniquity and passes over the rebellious acts of the remnant of his possession? He does not retain his anger forever because he delights in unchanging love. He will again have compassion on us. He will tread our iniquities underfoot. Yes, you will cast all their sins into the depths of the sea. Then verse 20. You will give truth to Jacob and unchanging love to Abraham. Now, Abraham sinned against God. He mated with his servant to try and have a son that God promised him maybe we would have, but he told him the promise was with him and Sarah, not Hagar. So God forgave him, and the Lord Jesus Christ came from Abraham's seed so that he could be born among men. Anyway, you will give truth to Jacob and unchanging love to Abraham, which you swore to our forefathers from the days of old. Now then, one other thing the Lord wants me to show you is that he's got such compassion, such love, but many of you are bitter, and I don't know all the answers, but I've got sickness and disease too. So you're not the only one, many of you, that are angry at God because he hasn't healed you. Well, I stand with you on that, but I haven't thrown in the towel. I know he will heal me. He's already healed my feet. I had plantar fasciitis, and now my feet don't hurt no more during work and after work from the pain that I had four years ago. He's healed my feet. I'm going to read to you Jonah 4, verse 11. Should I not have compassion on Nineveh, the great city in which there are more than 120,000 persons who do not know the difference between their right and their left hand, as well as many animals. Those of you that use the word GD, you know what I'm talking about. You use God's name in vain. Those of you that use the word holy and you talk about anything but God, you're using the word holy in vain and you are in danger of judgment. Repent and ask the Lord to help you to stop saying that. You say it habitually, loosely, and freely. You're in danger of judgment. I love my country. I so love my country. I don't know why that speaker screams when I hold the flag up. It concerns me. Because God knows she's a stench right now. Sin has gone rampant. And the true church has been praying, Lord God, help us. Food is high. Bills are high. Utilities. Everything. Gas. And we've cried out to him for help. And we said, Lord, do whatever you need to do to shake America and get these to repent, bring forth the spirit of repentance, that you might save them, that you might not damn them to hell. So I'm asking you one last time in this particular video, repent privately unto your God. And if you're not saved, he died for you. I have salvation videos on my channel way back when I started my channel. I've been to heaven. The newest videos are 
hope and salvation videos and I kind of made them a little bit comical with the things that we use in our every, everyday life to help you listen all the way to the end. But he died for you. He became a human and walked among man, helped him to finish the Bible, gave words from his own heart in the Bible that are in red ink. It's up to you to research all that out and see what it says. I forgive you, church. I forgive you, my family, for the way you're living. But repent to your God now before you're judged. I don't know if you'll only have right before August the 1st. I do not know. I do not know if he'll pour out a plague on you. I do not know. But he is going to do something to get you to be shaken that you will repent and then he may go on and take your life. You've played around long enough. You've lived loosely long enough. You accept this God that died on the cross and his blood can save even you. Tell him, Lord, I believe that you died on the cross for me and I want you to be Lord and Savior of my heart, my soul, my life save me right now and Lord I, I, I repent of all my sins I've got mountains of mountains and I've been so bitter towards you and I just said the heck with you I'm tired of you you don't do nothing fast enough God's not here to satisfy you he's here for you to find the right pathway for your life and you've listened to Satan too much and too long and you're living loosely in the world, watching all kind of garbage that keeps putting more and more garbage in your mind for sensual living, for cursing God. All the stuff created out there is nasty. You can change your life and start listening to some cleaner stuff or turn it off altogether spend time with God and make up for the days you've lost. You only have a few weeks before this great war comes. Now, I don't know. It could come tomorrow. All I know is it's supposed to happen before August the 1st. This will affect the whole country in these great earthquakes that are coming. The Lord had me do research. The new Mandarin fault line had um, three, four, five, I think it was six or eight mega earthquakes from an 8.0 to an 8.8 .8 for 54 days on and off. But the earthquakes kept coming for five months. Now five is biblical. There's a bunch of things in the Bible that talks about five months. The days that it took God to drain down the water on the earth was five months and then Noah could walk on the earth. There's a creature that's going to be created by God in the book of Revelations that's going to torment man for five months. There you go. There's the five twice that I've given to you. It's up to you to seek these things out. You might want to dive into the book of Revelations. It's pretty powerful. If you haven't never read it, a lot of you have jobs. You're just sitting down doing nothing. And you could be reading and thinking, hmm. God will help you. If you'll get saved, he'll show you even more in his word. He'll open doors that's never been opened. Anyway, I love you, church. I forgive you. I love you, family. I forgive you. If I can forgive you so simply, God can do so much more in your lives. Don't wait any longer. Subscribe to my channel. Soon the button will be pushed. And many of you will hear about these videos. But you're not going to see them on YouTube where I've placed my videos to be subscribed to because they're blocking my channel. They're only allowing about 50 to 60 people watch my whole channel. It's not me. I literally have uh, almost seven channels. I've sent the videos out in millions of millions of areas where there are millions and millions of subscribers 
and I've only gotten one subscriber from science and technology, and that's it. That's pretty sad. I love you. Please repent. And there are more warning videos coming about 9-11. There are more videos coming to help you to worship a God. And I'll guide you and show you step by step what to do. The next video is going to be to my co-workers and my neighbors. Because they're going to get these videos too. And they need to hear what God's got to say. I love you. Peace out for now. Thank you for being attentive this far in the video. Repent, repent, repent. It's not that hard. If you can tell your son or your daughter or your girlfriend, your boyfriend, your wife or your husband, honey, I'm sorry. I don't know why I did that. It's that easy to come to God's throne and say, Father God, I am sorry. I repent. He'll know if you really mean it because he can read not only the mind, he can read the heart and your good intentions because God dwells in the heart. I love you. I forgive you. Peace out for now.